Pirates fans know what hard times are all about. There's no doubt about it, but hard times lead to draft picks, and draft picks lead to top prospects. It's kind of like that stupid thing going around on social media, like the hard times create strong men, easy times create douchebags that make YouTube videos about minor league baseball, something like that. I don't know. I forget how it goes. It's just something created by guys who believe that like alpha males actually exist in nature. I'm way off in left field here. The Pittsburgh Pirates are following a model for a great rebuild. They have seven of the top 100 prospects, according to MLB.com. Five of those seven are top 50. And there's not really any sort of roster logjam that would prevent these guys from moving up when they're ready. Several guys on the big league squad are just on one-year deals. Uh, Dan Vogelbach will leave to play defensive tackle for the Steelers in the fall. (laughs) Uh, PNC Park is about to be a very exciting place. Second baseman Nick Gonzalez is widely regarded as the Pirates' top prospect. I already went over his profile in a recent video, my 10 Prospects You Should Know video. Um, I'll have that linked up here in the corner. He isn't included on my list here just as an attempt to not be super redundant on my channel. Um, Nick was possibly the best pure hitter in college baseball a few years ago. He's currently in double A Altoona, so keep an eye on him. Also, I omitted O'Neill Cruz because he did have a brief stint in the majors already, but he is my thumbnail. He just feels like the future face of the Pirates. Solid, solid player. If you guys dig the info I'm bringing you, please like, comment, Whatever you feel is necessary, help break down the outfield walls that stand between small ball creators like me and an actual audience. Um, If I didn't have to worry about copyright issues, I'd have Wiz Khalifa's black and yellow playing, so feel free to bump that in the background. Here we go. Lonnie White Jr. is a superior athlete, which has opened a lot of doors for him, to say the least. When he was drafted by the Pirates 64th overall in 2021, He was committed to play both baseball and football for Penn State. Some speculated he would be able to step into a starting role as both a wide receiver and an outfielder for the Nittany Lions his freshman year. It took $1.5 million for the Pirates to sign him away from a Bo Jackson-esque college career, but boy are they happy to have him. There's a pattern developing here with the type of young players they select out of high school. Bubba Chandler, also from the 2021 draft class, was on the books to play both baseball and football for the Clemson Tigers. Chandler has more of a Russell Wilson profile. He was slated to play middle infield and quarterback. Using the same formula they did with Lonnie White, the Pirates were able to pay big money and secure him. Chandler is a raw prospect still in the Florida Complex League, but scouts are speculating he may eventually switch to pitching. Remember, Versatility is a blessing, not a curse. Chandler's current teammate, Anthony Solomedo, is one of the youngest but also most exciting pitching prospects on the Pirates farm. Like Chandler, he was committed to play ACC baseball with North Carolina. He draws comparisons to a prevalent North Carolina native in Madison Bumgarner with his three-quarter arm slot and competitive flair. He's topping out around 95 right now so expect a flamethrower by the time he's ready for big league play. Jared Jones was the Pirates' 2020 second round pick. He profiles as a rare power pitcher who also has the stamina and the stuff to be a starter. Pedro Martinez comes to mind, but I'm sure there's a more contemporary comp out there. Um, His K per nine stat is the one that jumps off the page, but his walk total and ERA need to improve a little bit for him to make the jump up to double A. He's a fun pitcher to watch if you get a chance to catch a Greensboro Grasshoppers game. Indy Rodriguez started his career as a New York Mets international signing, but he caught the eye of Pirate scouts and found himself in the three-team deal that would send Joe Musgrove to the Padres. Rodriguez can just about play anywhere in the field. He's turned in innings in the outfield, first base, and behind the plate where he's at his best. He's got a smart approach in the batter's box, draws a lot of walks, and can hit for contact well. Carmen Mladzinski, a former staple in the South Carolina Gamecocks rotation, was the 31st overall pick in the 2020 draft. He has a good mix of pitches with a cut fastball being the highest rated. 
Also a slider with a lot of life to it. He's moving up the ranks fast. If I had to guess, I'd slot him in for a Pirates starting job by mid-2023. Leaver Pagero was an international player signed as a result of the Starling Marte trade. As I see Pagero progress, I see that the Pirates won that one. The shortstop's having a great year at AA Altoona, and what an awesome 6-4 double play combo they'll have between him and Nick Gonzalez. Quinn Priester was a right-handed pitcher taken 18th overall in the 2019 draft. He looked great in the 2020 Futures game despite limited in-game action that year. He's yet another Altoona player who's proven he has what it takes for the big leagues. Man, the curve are stacked right now. As with most young pitchers, he looks to gain consistency, but boy does he show flashes of brilliance. Henry Davis's profile looks like you just copied and pasted Adley Rutschman's profile onto a Pirates catcher. Taken first overall last year, he's a natural born leader who batted 370 with 15 home runs in college for Louisville. He's already in double A on the curve's top to bottom all-star team that I mentioned. This guy's a game changer. Travis Swaggerty, a former top 10 pick from the 2018 draft, has had a string of shoulder injuries delay his big league action, but he's off to a strong start in AAA this year in Indianapolis. He has everything you could ask for in a day-to-day -day starter in the outfield, good speed plus defense, and a good approach at the plate that often yields power. Well, there you have it. Plenty to be excited about there in the Steel City. Hey, drop me a line with which prospect you're most excited about or what team you'd like to see a farm system breakdown of next. Take it easy.